Hi, my name is Lawrence Harrison. I am Director of Automotive Partnerships at Radio Player, but I'm also the Chairman of the World DAB Automotive and User Experience Group. And it's in that capacity today that I'm moderating this session. Obviously, the reason that we are talking to you um, via video conference is because of the COVID-19 pandemic. So it seems entirely relevant and right that in this uh, discussion, we're going to be talking about the future of radio in the car post COVID-19. We have a panel of experts who will all introduce themselves in a moment, but they are all World DB members. They're all very close to the uh, automotive sector. And uh, in this discussion, we want to provide some insights, not just to the organizations themselves and what they're doing, but also to their views on the state of the automotive sector post COVID-19 or during COVID-19 even, and also the most importantly, the impact on radio in the car dashboard. So to start, I'm just going to ask each of our panelists to introduce themselves. And Rosie, let's start with you, please. Hello, hi, I'm Rosie Smith. I work for World DAB, um, the organization that sets the standards for DAB Digital Radio. And I work within the Automotive Working Group uh, alongside Lawrence. Uh, this group is currently working on three areas, which are user experience, making the best user experience for digital radio in the car. We're also working on aftermarket devices and setting some guidelines and some parameters for aftermarket devices so that they give the driver again the best experience of digital radio in the car. And then finally, we're working on um, performance so that digital radio performs for the driver and the antenna placement is in the uh, correct place um, and it's something that we uh, are working on or have been working on for the past couple of years so that's everything thank you rosie and nick could you introduce yourself please Hello, my name is Nick Piggott. I'm the project director of Radio DNS and we're the global organisation that sets standards for hybrid radio. Our ambition is to make the rollout of hybrid radio as quick and as cost effective as possible. And particularly we're looking at how we can use the combination of broadcast radio and IP to create an experience of radio that is better than can be delivered by either of those technologies in isolation. Brilliant. Thanks, Nick. And uh, Joe? From your side. Hi everyone, I'm Joe D'Angelo, Senior Vice President of Broadcast Radio for Xperi. Uh, Xperi is a global technology company that just this Monday doubled in size with the merger of TiVo. Some of you may know TiVo, they're the largest uh, metadata, music metadata supplier in the world. But we have three areas of focus, primarily looking at technology in cars, home, and mobile. And we focus a tremendous amount of our energy in getting new broadcast radio technology into cars. We have 70 million cars on the road right now with HD radio, and we recently launched our DTS Connected Radio, which is a hybrid radio platform that we've developed in partnership with a lot of folks on this call, both Radio DNS, Radio Player, and um, Xavier. Great, thanks Joe. And Xavier, on that note, over to you. Yeah, it's me, Xavier. I'm Xavier Filiol. I'm the CEO of the company called Radioline. So Radioline is a 15 years company uh, working on the IP side. We're doing an application. We have a database of content. Uh, we started to work with uh, Orange 15 years ago. And then we did uh, mobile, OTT, smart TV. And now we are focusing on automotive because it seems that the connected uh, time is, is arrived. Thanks, Xavier. And Mike? Hi, I'm Michael Hill. I'm the MD of UK Radio Player and Radio Player Worldwide, which is our fast-growing international arm. The Radio Player started about nine years ago in the UK, backed by the BBC and the big commercial radio groups. We're a non-profit organisation, and we aim to help radio grow in strategically important places like the car dashboard. And we do this in three ways. Um, we talk to car companies to remind them how important radio is to their customers. Um, we send them feeds of official metadata from broadcasters in radio DNS standards and others uh, so that they can get the right logos and the right streams and showcase the stations brilliantly. 
Uh, and finally, we, we help them make better radio interfaces by sharing designs and technology with them for free. Brilliant. Thanks, guys. That's given us a really good overview. And, you know, all of you are working extremely closely with the automotive sector. Um, and on that note, um, I just want to get some your views on how you think the um, COVID-19 pandemic has impacted the automotive sector itself from a kind of macro perspective. All businesses are facing a tough time, or most businesses are facing a tough time as we emerge from the COVID-19 pandemic. But what do you see as some of the major things, major ways in which the automotive sector has been impacted? And I think, um, Joe, obviously you work um, globally, but obviously based in the US. So be, let's, let's start with your, your take on this. Sure. Um, obviously, this has been a real rough time for everyone, including the auto industry. And a lot of estimates are showing that the industry will uh, be down somewhere between you know, 18 and 25 percent in car sales. But there are signs of hope. We've seen some recent announcements from major uh, Japanese automakers that they expect their supply chains, uh, manufacturing and sales to be back up to pre-COVID pre levels uh, in the September, October timeframe. So fingers crossed we're, we'll be able to come out of this and, um, and recoup pretty quickly. In terms of how we are engaging with automakers, I think we've seen two very interesting kind of shifts. One was a trend that had started prior to COVID, and that's a real focus on security and reliability of systems that they're integrating into the vehicle. Uh, I think the relationship with the supply chain um, is, has been changing from more of just a vendor relationship to more of a partnership relationship. And a lot of that's being driven by the ongoing services that car companies are looking to integrate into the vehicles. I think the, the other thing we're also seeing, which is interesting, and I think this is due a lot to the economic uh, situation, the car companies are really looking for technology uh, partners, companies uh, that are able to sustain development, sustain operations, and actually be partners in the development in the integration and then uh, be able to ensure um, sustained services. And that's kind of obvious with the big players like, um, you know, Apple and uh, Google and Amazon. But now they're starting to push those kind of requirements and expectations out to almost every company that is supplying solutions to them. So I think those are, those are two shifts that, that we're seeing. Again, one I think directly related to COVID uh, and the economic downturn. The other one on the security side was probably just an evolving trend as, as cars were getting more and more connected. Thanks, and, and yes, I mean, I guess some of this will, has the potential to speed up trends we were already seeing as well. Um, Xavier, from, from your perspective, what do you see for the automotive sector? Uh, yes, I said that uh, we are coming from the IP world and the application world, I would say. And we see that more and more, OEMs are thinking that they should speed up the, the mutation and propose the same level of look and feel like a, a mobile or even a, a connected TV. So there is a lot of effort uh, on the UX side and the approach of the, the app is, uh, is something that we are proposing. Uh, also, because we have a worldwide content, it also makes sense for OEMs because of course, uh, the device, the car are, are sold everywhere. So they, sh they need to rely on a worldwide and a sustainable um, database of contents with rich metadata, et cetera. That's what we're providing also. But we also see that there is a pileup of, um, of, uh, of the project post COVID, which means that there is a current project uh, the OEMs was working on that stopped the intermediate project before the next generation of connected car that it's might be canceled. And then we might jump and skip directly to the next generation, which is the connected one, with offering uh, connectivity, interactivity, and of course, podcast native content from IP, which is good because DAB it's digital. So it will be, it will come with, that's why we are putting effort on hybrid solution and, uh, and maybe we'll have a, a good opportunity to, to see this next generation, maybe before that what was planned. 
Thanks. Yeah, I guess that's a, a sort of inevitable consequence, that kind of piling up or, and potentially slowing down of projects. Um, Mike, from, from your perspective, what do you see? Well, I think it's really important to remember the human side of all this as well. Um, you know, from my perspective, there are human effects and there are technological effects. So the human effects we've seen is a massive increase in the consumption of radio during this time because radio is a live, linear um, stream of audio with a human connection and it brings you news and information which we've all needed. It brings you music and chat and entertainment and diversion which we've all, we've all needed. And it brings you that human connection because when we're feeling alone and scared and, and isolated in our houses, there's nothing better than a radio for, for bringing us together. So I think, uh, you know, Radio Player has seen huge jumps in our listener numbers. Between uh, February and March, we saw a jump of 50% in the users of Radio Player. And we think that post COVID, um, car manufacturers will be reminded of the importance of radio to people. Uh, the second thing I want to talk about is the technological uh, changes that may happen as a result of this at the car companies. And I think there I'd echo some of the points that the others made around simplification, uh, possibly lack of resources at car companies leading to driving costs down, uh, consolidation. So I think overall car companies will be looking for simpler technological solutions, maybe with one or two trusted platform partners rather than three or four suppliers as before. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Um, I'd, I'd be interested in maybe views on the next point about whether or not the automotive companies have kind of noticed the importance of radio during this. But, but Nick, um, from your side, what do you see? Well, I think in common with everybody, uh, every business has had to deal with the shock of the economy suddenly stopping and the, and the flow of money suddenly stopping. Um, so companies have done exactly what they needed to do to deal with that initial shock. I think those um, immediate issues are beginning to recede a little bit and companies are looking for the opportunity to kind of do a little bit of reinvention, some strategic change uh, and working out what might happen with demand for vehicles in the future. Uh, although it's pretty much stopped right now, what's interesting um, is some early signs, for example, that as people are getting more uh, anxious about using public transport, demand for second-hand vehicles is increasing and the price of second-hand vehicles is increasing because more people are looking back to uh, owning their own vehicle and traveling by themselves. And, and I'm sure that will ripple through the market into um, increased new car sales and more people spending more time in the vehicle. And if we can deliver to them a fabulous radio experience, um, either in a, a disconnected or in a connected car, that seems to be a kind of midterm positive for this is more people listening to more radio in their vehicles. Thanks, Nick. Yeah, I th that's it. That's an interesting observation, that trend. And, and Rosie, from your side, I wonder if you could comment on, on the impact on the automotive sector, but then also lead us into the sort of the final topic, which is more about the direct impact and implications for radio and audio. Nick sort of alluded to a bit of that there. But if you could just talk about automotive, but then also just touch on what you see as the direct implications for the future of radio in car dashboards. So also um, following on from what Nick said, there is this feeling that the car is now a safe space. So although um, people are currently not driving to work and they're not taking uh, public transport to work, the safe space is going to be a big thing in the future. So that's going to help the economic recovery of the car companies. Also, um, the services now being offered in terms of for drivers and for consumers, we've seen a huge growth in curbside um, shops and offerings and drive-throughs are now coming back online so some of the cultural influences have changed due to covid because people no longer want to walk down the street they no longer want to get on public transport um, and uh, local radio is being seen as something that can help the high street and help dealerships and push people further towards um, the, few, uh, the future which will have changed in terms of uh, local businesses. So local radio and local businesses working together to help people get out and, and um, get back onto the high street. So 
we've seen within World Dab also that the car companies are um, at this time a lot more accessible. So their teams are at home and we've been working quite closely with them just because they have been in the space where they want to look at the future and they want to look at what their options are. In the short term, everything has changed. They uh, are telling us that it's very difficult in the short term to get um, to spend money. But in the longer term, they feel that things are still on track for digital radio. So I think one of the main things that we've taken away from this is in the shorter term development in digital radio is going to be difficult but in the longer term there's definitely um, still plans for more of the companies to go digital especially towards the end of the year when the EECC directive um, comes into force and all cars in Europe must have a digital radio. So I think that leads on to as you say uh, everybody else answering a similar question how is the future of radio and digital radio in the car looking from now Thank, thanks rosie and that's good that um i think the from a, a dab regulation perspective uh, in europe that it, people are still respecting that and focused on that just coming on to that that final point about the direct implications for radio i guess i think we'd seen quite a lot of or, or felt that there was some momentum particularly behind hybrid radio and I wonder if, if there's a sense that this is in any way going to set that back at all or there's going to be any changes there. Um, I mean, Joe, from, a, from a, a radio perspective, do you see any direct implications post-COVID? Um, it's kind of interesting because, um, yeah, we're, we're definitely seeing the, the pressure on the bill of materials, and I'll speak specifically about HD radio. Um, but the take rates, the application rates are remaining consistent. And we will be launching our first uh, hybrid radio platform uh, later this year. And while the testing, the field testing was impacted slightly, the everything is on schedule for our uh, fall uh, global launch, which we're very excited about. If I could just take a second and tell a quick story about something that's going on here in the States with Beasley Broadcasting. I think it really will illustrate how when radio does the right thing, um, it, radio gets recognized as this critical uh, information source to the community. Beasley has a program called Community Cares. And once the crisis uh, emerged back in March, they repositioned the entire uh, program around uh, messaging around COVID, whether it was local messaging, text and images on radio displays with RDS and HD radio, uh, talking about school closings, uh, about you know which hospitals had longer wait times than others, um, and as things stabilized, it, they started to use that to just reinforce the message of uh, support. You know we're all in this together. Social distancing, wash your hands. It was a message that they deployed consistently across all of their 60 plus stations. That service, that messaging, was seen by a major. Um, US-based automotive CEO when he was driving his car. He saw this and he said, wow, look at what radio is doing. And thank God we are supporting HD radio so our vehicle can actually display this and share that information with the audience. So it was, a, it was really, um, really impactful to me, having worked on this technology for so long, to see radio stations leveraging it and car companies realizing the power of radio to do very subtle things, but consistent things in this time of crisis. No, thanks, Joe. That's, I know that's something that, that Mike touched on um, in terms of, you know, radio's importance during these times and whether or not the automotive companies have noticed that. Um, Mike, anything else from, from your side in terms of what you're seeing as, as a direct impact potentially on radio? Well, I was initially worried when we went into this lockdown period that uh, like Rosie said, car companies would be harder to get hold of and would kind of go into a bunker. But actually, the opposite has proved to be the case. I'm finding that as people get more and more used to remote working and video conferencing, their car companies are more accessible than ever before. In fact, you know, we've been we found it very easy in the past few weeks to have plenty of conversations, really meaningful conversations with car companies. And, and more than that, I, I think the whole when you go through a crisis, 
uh, you kind of hit an, almost an emotional reset button. And it could be that you're open to things that you never dreamt of before. It could be that you're forced to be open to those things because you're, as, as Joe said, the bill of materials is being driven down. The, the money you're prepared to spend uh, on projects and on cars is less and less uh, because you're selling fewer cars. So we've seen uh, car companies very open-minded to discussions about the radio player partnership model with trusted broadcasters backing it and a free metadata service for them as well. Uh, so we, you know, we, we've actually seen a lot of interest in the past few weeks. So far from it, they have not gone into a bunker. Thanks, and Nick, obviously within Radio DNS, a lot of the, the big OEMs are, are, are within your membership. Um, what, 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 are you hearing anything, hearing anything from them or, and what do you see? Yeah, I would say we, we've had a broadly similar experience that the, the people who are looking at the strategic work and the research and design work and, and future product development have by and large been available and been accessible. And, and actually because they've had less noise from the day-to-day -day business to contend with, they have been to really think about what their future moves with, with radio are. Um, and, and it feels encouraging. It feels like generally people are remembering that radio is useful and valuable to them. And that's generally our audiences and listenerships. But, you know, people who work in automotive companies listen to the radio more as well. Uh, and that's helpful from a, a kind of, as Mike says, an emotional basis to get them more engaged. So I, I, whilst it's hard right now for a lot of businesses and it's hard for a lot of radio stations, I generally feel that what we're going through at the moment is bringing people back to understanding how valuable radio is. And that includes the people in automotive companies who may have felt like the value of radio was diminishing or they were misreading what people valued radio for. And if we can capitalize on that and if we can bring them the right solutions and the right standards and the right technologies to improve radio in the car, it feels like that, that this is uh, giving people a new, fresh pair of eyes on how useful and how valuable radio can be in the car. Thanks, Nick. I think that's one of the things that's coming out from this conversation. But Xavier, um, in your discussions, what, what, what are you seeing regarding the implications for radio? I'm not afraid that radio will remain in the top place unless it will be compatible with a new environment. Uh, like we mentioned, there is a, a Google who is launching uh, Android Automotive, which is a, a brand new OS. A lot of OEMs made this choice, and it's super important that uh, we can deliver the best experience with uh, those constraints, because an OS is, of course, a constraint. So uh, we achieved to do something with uh, only IP uh, content, but also hybrid content which means uh, on that environment, we are able to trigger from FM, DAB, HD, and, and IP streams, which is super important because that's exactly what the people are expecting and demand in terms of look and feel. Again, the application approach is super important. You need to click and have a direct response and uh, interactivity. Even if you are listening to linear content, FM and DAB, it's super important to make the connection between all those streams. So that's the first point. And the second point is the data. I think it's a key point of the connected car. Uh, so I know that there is ongoing discussion between OEMs and telcos. We also can, can rely on the connection through the mobile, through mobile tethering. So there is plenty of possibility to, to jump to the next generation of connected car and connected experience, unless we are compatible with a new standard. Of the now we are more uh, uh, facing a, a computer uh, car, uh, connected computer car than before, and I think it's super super exciting time, really. Thank you, Xavier. And I think we're we're about at the end of uh, the time we had due for this session, and I think we've had some really interesting views here. I think I get a sense of um, optimism. I get a sense of the fact that radio has played a really important role during the COVID-19 crisis, and that probably hasn't gone unnoticed by our OEM partners. And despite the difficulties they're going through from an economic perspective, it sounds like there's been a healthy level of engagement with all, at least these partners um, that are within the World DB network. So uh, on that note, I would like to thank all of our panelists 
Um, and I think anyone who's looking at this who isn't part of World DB, and we're all members, and we'd urge you to get in touch with Rosie and talk about becoming part of the network. Thank you very much.